This episode has been brought to you by Fornos Law Firm, devoted to optimizing your legal results at fornoslaw.com. Welcome to Push Rim Life After Injury Podcast for August 24th, 2013, episode 31. Special guest, Tamara Mena. I'm Ray Pizarro. I'm Richard Bell. Welcome to Push Rim, where we talk about different spinal cord injury related topics, uh, resources, and also like to spotlight different people that are doing great work in the disabled community. And with that, um, it brings me great pleasure to introduce a, a good friend of ours and a super, super uh, active and, and, and great person, uh, Tamara Mena. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Finally. Finally, Tam. That's right. So, um, Tam, how did you get injured? I'm going on eight years ago. So October 15, 2005, I was injured. It was a Saturday night. I was on my way. I was living down in San Diego, and it's very common to go to Rosarito or Tijuana, you know, go to Mexico across the border just for the night. And that was the plan to go have a fun night. And we wanted to be safe in, in our efforts to have fun. We wanted to be safe. So we drove down to the border, my friends, my boyfriend and I. And we grabbed a taxi in um, Tijuana that would take us to Rosarito Beach. We were almost there. We were just on our way. We were about um, a couple minutes away from our destination we hit a horse that was randomly standing in the middle of the road. It was dark. We're going about 80 miles an hour. So we struck the horse at such a high speed, and the horse um, Goodness. fell on top of the roof, my side, left side, and crushed the roof all the way down to sea level. So if you picture that, it's a miracle that I'm here today. It's always a reminder and a blessing to be able to say it out loud. My boyfriend, who was next to me, and the taxi driver, unfortunately, they didn't make it. The The wow. impact was fatal. They were... Sorry to hear that. ...killed instantly. Thank you. And, um, and that was the hardest thing by far. But uh, honestly, the with that kind of impact, I'm just so lucky. My boyfriend, though, pushed me down, and that's how he my life was spared so... Essentially, the weight of the horse is what fell on top of my back, the horse and the, you know, the, the roof. And so I had to have a trach. My lungs were collapsed and I had multiple fractures, shoulder, clavicle, you name it. And, you know, my, that's how my spinal cord was severed. Wow. Um, so, like, what hospital did you go to? I went to Tijuana for a day and a half. And then my family transferred me to San Diego. So I was at UCSD for about three weeks until they stabilized me. And then they flew me up to Santa Clara Valley Medical Center that specializes in spinal cord injuries. And they have a great rehab. And it's much closer to home. Or My family lived in Modesto, California. Oh, so how was, um, how was rehab there? Um, uh, rehab, I mean, the, the hospital is great. And you know, it was all good for me, but it was hard. I would say the hardest thing was the trach. I, I struggled with that. Yeah. And so everyone who's, <laughs> yeah, everyone who's, you know, had, bre- you know, difficulties breathing can understand that. That was hard. And just, I'm fused from C3 to T10. So that was really, really tough. So I had to go home and recover and then come back because mm-hmm. I had such a long brace that I just couldn't do my rehab. So rehab wasn't, I mean, I don't know that there's a well, best way, but yeah. I had great support system. Good, good, the hardest yeah. thing by far was losing my boyfriend. We had been dating for three years, mm-hmm. and he was just a loving person. But what always remained is my my biggest goal and my biggest drive in life was to go back to school, and that, that's what kept my motivation up. And how was that for you? Uh, what, what stages... Uh did you take? Did you go to school for us or started working? Uh, after I got home, um, I thought I had a plan, you know, and I thought I was going to be able to drive very soon. But I had a lot of medical complications mm. after I got home, and that just delayed my yeah. um, my whole process and being able to go back to college. But eventually, I made it uh, like about close to two years Good. after my injury to the date I went back to college and I majored in communication studies 
and I have a concentration in public relations. And I went into communication studies because I love the field. It's really interesting, but also because I started, you know, sharing my story. Mm -hmm. I started talking to all sorts of groups, and I realized I wanted to be a speaker. That's when I um, got kind into of found my passion speak. for public speaking. Cool. Good for you. And uh, also, uh, did that also help you get into like doing some support groups? And 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 did you find that helpful? Yeah, mentoring has been part of my whole process all along. is really important. So I would make sure, even when I was in in college, and because I it was um, it was just in a whole different direction. I lived in Modesto. Santa Clara was over here. College was over there. But I would still make time to go to Santa Clara. And you know, just bring support to just those newly injured. So, and then from that, I started. Uh, it's the Young Women's SEI group at Santa Clara because they didn't have a Young Women's, and I always felt as a young woman who was, you know, paralyzed. I felt like I didn't have that straight connection. So, I wanted to provide that for young, younger women. Good yeah, because um, spinal cord injury seems like a boy dominated. Uh, event there definitely no, yes yeah it really is and um so after you um uh, i mean got yourself sort of back together had the uh, courage and strength and and health also to get back and started doing these different projects how does exo the exobionics that uh, we see a lot of you know photos and magazines that you're involved with how, tell us a little bit about that Honestly, I had given up hope that I would walk again. Never in life. I was very hopeful about life in general, but I didn't think walking was going to be for me. It was a complete injury. So I'm very fortunate to say that walking came to me, the opportunity. I wasn't even looking for ways to walk or new technology. A friend of mine who was involved with Exobionics said, hey, you know, I'm involved with this project. It had. It was just... Um, I had just, you know, gone on the news and stuff, and he was, and so I looked it up, and I was so excited about it, and I told him, well, I, I asked myself, why not? You know, I, I don't have anything to lose. I mean, if, no, if it doesn't no. work out, it doesn't work out. And this is really neat. I actually, I'm only 5'2", and I always say, you know, for ones, like being short actually paid off because they were looking for, because their, their clinical studies were so limited and they were looking for short participants. So that's how I was able to get in so early on in the project because they were wanted to see if it, if somebody 5'2 could use it, basically. So I got in, we found out, hey, somebody 5'2 can use it, and in fact, walk. And the journey with it has been amazing. The biggest thing, like the biggest lesson is to really never give up hope with any, on anything or that's been the biggest lesson. I was. I always tell people to, I mean, the impossible can all of a sudden become your reality, and that was it for me. I, I kind of didn't think that would be possible, and then it was my reality, and here I was walking on Sabado Gigante show. Actually, I was invited first just, just to go and share my story, mm -hmm. and then I was invited a second time, which is usually unheard of, but it's Sabado Gigante is like a TV show I grew up watching. I never thought, you know, I would be walking with the EXO. I got to walk at the doctor's Inside Edition. Yeah, you were in quite and, a few. You know, several just crazy opportunities. It even led to uh, doing a conference in Mexico that led to walking and talking in the G20 in Los Cabos, and I got to meet the president of Mexico. Just, it. I'm really forever, I'm forever thankful for just exo on all the opportunities that's created in, in many ways. So not just to walk, but even the simple things that we take for granted. Even I, when I hugged my mom for the first time standing up again, I, re, I remember I told her I forgot how good it felt to like hug you standing up. I die. Yeah. And I die. Not even trying to be corny. I, I forgot how good it felt. So not just like, oh, walking on all these big stages, but mm -hmm. just the simple things. So... I'll be forever yeah. thankful. No, that's great. And I also see you did some um, some stuff overseas, uh, interviews out there. How, how was that? Yes. So I uh, I was involved with this fashion show. It's called uh, Modelle Rotelle, and it's in Rome. And the real cool thing about this, it's an integrative catwalk. So they have 
standing models and sitting models. So I entered the casting. I was selected as a model, sitting model. And it's just really neat because it's really professional and they have really nice major designers that are involved with this. And the organization is Vertical. And I also went as a host. So I did backstage interviews. So I, I've gone into hosting and I love it. And hosting came in a really bizarre way from a lot of times being on these TV shows. Mm -hmm. It's how I've discovered that I like hosting and I like being on TV and put on the spot. And really my degree is so flexible. It's part of part of what I studied, but that's how I found my love for that. Yeah, and they seem more progressive there than um, the fashion industry here. Because I've never, I've never seen an integrated uh, fashion show with sitting in. No, and and and, it, and truly, it's the only one in the world. But I mean, Rome is like the capital of fashion. So for them, like fashion is huge, and so I definitely encourage everybody to look it up. I also on my website, it's um, tamramena dot com. I have under portfolio all my work videos and you know in the news articles and yeah, we're gonna make sure we plug that at the end of the show. So make make sure people uh, tap into that. Oh, I just, uh, I had one question about the um, XL. Um, is that the program out of uh, UC Berkeley? It, uh, yes and no, it started, so oh, it did start off from the uh, UC Berkeley lab, but Exobionics is a private company and okay. it's now, it now stands on its own. Okay, but yeah. There's yeah, different projects going on. I think they have an exoskeleton and there's a few other ones yeah. in the world. But EXO, EXO is currently, and I don't know the actual number, but it's in a lot of the major hospitals in the U.S. and overseas as well. They have uh, great rehab programs, have now their own EXO, so people can actually walk with it. And they don't have to go directly to Exobionics. Uh, okay, yeah, it's confusing because um, uh, whenever I find something online about it, I try to blog it on uh, Pushroom. And um, I'm like confused as to who's doing what. But uh, a lot of okay. hospitals have basically partnered with Exobionics, okay. gotten their own Exo, and but they're running their own studies with different criteria. But it's the same device, same company for the most part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Getting back to nuestra belleza, um, did did there some kind of controversy? Uh, Bloom, do you feel like talking yeah, about Yeah, no, already? definitely. I'll, I'll explain what, what this is. So part of also what I've been into has been modeling prior to my injury. Okay. I After the first thing, very first thing I did after my injury was a photo shoot okay. as far as activities because as most of you guys know, like there's a lot of activities, physical activities you can't do until after a year. So yeah. just a few months post-injury, I did a photo shoot with my great friend, photographer that, you know, just encouraged me to get back, you know, in front of the camera. And so we did that. And ever since then, I've tried to carry it on and, you know, just keep on going with the modeling. Mm -hmm. So this is a show. It's a beauty pageant slash reality TV show. It's huge. It's on a seven. It just had its seventh season on um, Univision. And I went and auditioned and I went against like, I think nearly 200 women, like all fully abled. So I actually made it in, into the show. So I'm the first woman in a wheelchair to make it on the show, but also to ever audition. Like the producers were shocked that when I rolled in, they they're like they they'd never they've never just interviewed somebody in a wheelchair, and they never thought they would see it. I mean, sadly, nice. but um, they never just thought about it, and so. Um, it was great. So I made it on TV and in front of the celebrity judges. So there's different steps, you know, to this beauty pageant show. And I didn't get to go on in the competition. This is sort of where the controversy comes. All, all their criteria that they usually look for, which is ability to speak and presence on stage, et cetera, looks, things that they would look for, all of that was in place. And they said they had only but good feedback to say. The only thing that prevented me from going, according to them, was just my phys lack of physical strength. I don't remember their words, but basically my disabilities were prevented me from keep going on because they have physical challenges oh. that are key parts of this 
but but it's still, a, I whack. I wish they would have been. I try to uh, enlighten them and tell them how I work out, and there's a lot of things that can be adapted. But they didn't they didn't think it would be fair to the other contestants or myself. Mm. And this is where the controversy comes. And most people supported me. I would say about ninety percent of people. It, a lot of people, you know, commented. Uh, the Huffington Post interviewed me a lot of newspapers wrote about it was on all national tv shows like yeah. all the major ones they talked about my you know on my audition on tv mm-hmm. and most people were supportive but there are some people that they they said beauty pageant and she's in a wheelchair like what was she thinking like never and you know forget it and well, you, know, you were you were actually helping break that stereotype in a lot of ways so Absolutely. I mean, they never thought they would see somebody. I still wasn't able to go on, but I still made it to a certain face and I planted the seed above everything. Even it might not be, this might not be the route. And the reason why I did this is because the winner essentially, they, they host and they work on TV. And that's why I did this. And the, the frustrating thing was that to them, I had hosting and communication abilities. It was mm-hmm. just, the, and that's what was frustrating. But but there's other ways to get there. I don't have right. to, you know, I don't have Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Uh, no, we'll give you a lot of props for that, for you being brave enough to say, hey, why not? Give it a try. Who knows what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. I always say, thank you. I always say, you know, to see the change, we got to be the change. And I try to practice what I preach. And this was one scenario I was like, well, this is what you're preaching. Well, got to practice it. And I, I'm i just thankful. And I, I just... I tried it. I, I won't be like, what if, you right, know? Right. I know I did it. I tried my best. And that's the biggest thing, I think, to not limit ourselves. I've done so many things in the last few, say, couple years. So many things, you know, we get all these limitations and barriers right. ourselves and instead of just going for it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you always say, oh, well, I'm not a dancer. I'm not this. Like, I've been doing... I did Latin ballroom. I just did modern dance. And, you know, it's just good, good to you. never let any, you know, your disability or anything else like stop you from just achieving it. Or and, even what people say. Yeah. Or what people say for that matter. Yeah. I mean, if I listen to some of these people, what they said online about me you know, after my audition, I mean, I would oh, just no. be at home, you know, like crying, in, sobbing, in four doors. Depressed. Absolutely. Yeah, and and some worst. people are harsh, but you just got to keep your head up high and That's keep right. on rolling. That's right. Uh, Absolutely. And, and as we get down to uh, the end here, um, so now what, what, what are your plans now? What's, what's upcoming for Tamara Mena? Well, I have a lot of plans and I have a lot of goals and dreams. And the biggest one is to continue with hosting. I'll still continue the modeling. I had a recent uh, covers, magazine covers, but you guys won Mm -hmm. and um but i definitely want to move to la for those hosting opportunities to really open up and kick off i i gotta be here this is like the mecca for that so that's that's what's coming i also have a book deal so i'm focused on writing my book i'm buying one (laughs) thank you yeah yeah. thank you We'll, we'll be your first two yeah thank you and i mean that's that's a process there's a lot that i can just feel that's coming so um, so yeah, stay tuned for that and, um, just keep on going with also the dancing and, um, I want to take some acting classes. There's a, just kind of that entertainment industry. And I think it takes, you know, people, everybody just, I think TV and being on TV other than, you know, just being a public figure, mm-hmm. it's a huge vehicle for, to open up doors and to break those stereotypes, just yes. being on you know the times I've been been on these shows has helped, and that and everybody who's on TV. But I don't just want to be on TV once as a special guest. Mm-hmm. I want to show my talent as a communicator and work and be seen like any other host. And and that's that's my big goal. No, do you get you get a lot of credit for that? And and also you you, you don't Thank even you. know how big of an impact you're you're making, and you don't probably see it. Uh, but there's a lot of people just by sharing your story and. And, um, and and having that trail of your accomplishments is huge. That can motivate someone to go out there and do what they want to do, you know, and, and, and get inspired. So, and that's what it's all about at the end of the day, right? Thank you. The biggest thing, you know, if I can just close with something is believing sure. in yourself. That was the biggest thing. 
when I faced the producers and anybody I faced in situations where they're kind of like, she's here, like, what is she doing here? I mean, I had people look at me like, what is this girl here for? Like, she's in a chair. And, you know, I believed I had the potential. I believed I, I had just as much, um, maybe not right, but just, you know, I had just as much ability to be there. I might not have certain things, but I have other things that maybe other people don't have. And always highlight, you know, work on what you can work, appreciate those, and highlight what you can. And the rest, just let it go. Well said. I, I couldn't uh, think of a better way to wrap up than that. Well, Tamara... We thank you so much for being with us. I know we're short on time, and it'll take us two hours to really get into the guts of things. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, sure we'll have you back for the XL. Yeah, this way we could see what projects, how they developed, and, yes. and get more in depth in those. But um, you want to share with our community where they could find you and, and reach out and, and read more about you? This was great. First of all, thank you for the space, and I'm really glad we made this happen finally. And thank you to everybody who tuned in. And um, yes, if you want to find out more about me or my projects, you can look me up on uh, tamaramena.com, tamaramena.com, and also on Facebook. I have a public page, and also Twitter, tamaramena1. And push room. She's on push room. And I, I, of course, I have a. And she will be more active on there also. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for highlighting that. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. And as far as. You um, can look me up there too. And one of the things also I'll I'll be doing, I'm here also right now doing some stuff with um, Topolino. It's a new carbon fiber wheels, which I have on right now. And doing some stuff with Disabled, Disabled Life Media. I also have a profile there. Andrew. Yeah, that's our boy. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, if as far as uh, Pushroom's concerned, you can, uh, I mean, you found us on YouTube, obviously, but if um, you don't like to see me and Ray, if we mess up uh, this the shot for you, you can uh, listen to us on iTunes. I'm sure you're going to tune in this time for Tamara, because, uh, you know, <laughs> so anyway. Yes. That's where you can reach us. That's right. And also, uh, you could, um, you know, connect with us uh, directly. Please send us an email at info at pushroom.com with any show topics, questions, or special guests. Uh, we're here for our community to share everything we can. And once again, Tamara, thank you for being with us. We are honored to have you. And you're one of our superstars yeah. that, that made it into our our humble abode, if you will. And uh, we'd like to have well, you back in you. the future. Absolutely. Anytime. Anytime I, I come to L.A. or when I move here, uh, I'll be dropping by for sure. Come back thank and you. hang out with us. Yes, thank definitely. You so much. And with that, we leave you guys. We thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Till next time. Peace out. Peace, Peace out. Bye. <laughs>